All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the podcast. And uh, with any luck, this should be the last week that I say the podcast. We will officially have a new name next week. Um, fingers crossed. Rabbits foot out. Lucky Clover. All that good stuff. <laughs> uh, I'm Rick. I'm joined by Big Show. Show, how you doing, man? Good, sir. Okay. So we got... Uh, five things I want to get to today. It's really four, and then we pick off from pick up from where we left off two weeks ago. But uh, we'll get to that. I saved that one uh, for almost last because you know, after we get rid of all the drab, I want to go out on a higher note. But first things first, man, because this has been weighing on me for a while. Um, these school shootings, man. They seem to be happening more and more often. And it seems like less and less is happening as far as the government level to keep these things from happening. These kids have access to things that we didn't have access to growing up. And although I'll call that out as a major part of the problem, I'm going to go as far as to say that there are other factors that are part of the problem. Um, parenting can be included in that. Uh, you want to share your thoughts on that? On the entire subject or just on parenting? The entire subject. <clears throat> um, it, it hurts my heart. These, you know, you know, the day after the, the shooting in Uvalde uh, last week in Richardson, Texas, there was another uh, shooter that was not able to get into the school and he was apprehended without hurting anyone. So that was the day after those 19 or 20 people, I think 18 out of those guys were, were children, lost their lives. Somebody else the very next day tried to do the exact same thing. <clears throat> I think the movies that are out, the shows that are out, the video games that are out, uh, the mentality that is being, uh, the information is being sent to our young kids, they're desensitized to... Um, the repercussion of the choices. Mm -hmm. um, I am a firm believer, I've seen this all over Facebook too, that, you know, when 9-11 happened, we didn't blame the terrorists for what they did. We made our airports no longer soft targets. And that's what schools are. They are soft targets and they need to be protected and by whatever means that is. If that means hiring extra security guards to post every door, so be it. If they need to raise taxes to do it, so be it. I am all for protecting our youth. I have actually walked into my daughter's high school through a side door and actually raised hell because I got in the house with I, or got into the school without anybody stopping me here in Kansas City. So um, you just walked right in? Yeah, because these kids order Uber Eats or DoorDash, and they have the driver come to the side door to drop the food. They come out and get it. Mm. That door's open. Anybody can walk up to it. Wow. So I just walked in and walked right into the office. Yeah, now, that's, that's pretty loose. That was on towards the end of the year. Um, so my daughter shows three more years at that particular school. So I will be doing it again the first part of next year just to see if they fixed anything. <clears throat> but yeah, it's very scary. Um, I do know that they have done some things to help protect some of the schools. Like I know, and you might have to tell, it was a few months ago, Shawnee Mission Northwest, I believe, had an active shooter. They they, they penetrated Did the they? first. Yeah, it, it, it might have been, I'm pretty sure it was Shawnee Mission Northwest, but they actually penetrated the first set of doors but could not get through the second set of doors. Like, cause you know, there's, you have to be buzzed in and then you have to be buzzed in again. 
he got into the first set, but not the second set because the people were actually either a seeing him coming, you know, he they had video, whatever reason he did not get in. And I, I want to say that was Shawnee Mission Northwest. I'm pretty sure it was one of the Kansas schools um, in that area, Shawnee, Olathe, and that area. I'm pretty sure it was just a few months ago. Uh, but yet, yeah, we have to do something to protect protect these kids. The government has to do something. They need to put, you know, you're sending all this money to Ukraine to help them. Let's help our kids here in the United States. What about this gun thing? I um, mean, because it is very easy for a kid to get a gun. And I know that I've heard a lot of stuff. They blame um, a video game on it, but the video game doesn't make the guns available to the kids. So the video game is only partly to blame. I mean, without the gun, everything else is off the table. True. And can you ever actually police that? If you're a parent, you have a firearm because i'm all for the right to bear arms i'm mm -hmm. i'm so for that i'm not against guns at all guns aren't evil it's the suckers behind the trigger that are evil yeah. that's what makes that gun a weapon uh however if you are a parent like i am a gun owner my gun my guns are under lock and key you know my pistol is in a gun safe where all i have to do is put my hand on the release and the gun pops out into my hand you know nice. it's quick for me it's quick for me to get, but nobody else can do it. You know, my daughter can't walk in there and do the same thing. Um, I mean, you know, you have to protect your weapons. But, I mean, you and I grew up, if we wanted a gun, we could have got a gun, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it, those things haven't changed. And they're, and they're not going to change. We cannot, unless you're going to rewrite, rewrite the Constitution, we can't stop these people from getting the guns we can make it difficult we can make it a little bit more harder they have to go through extra steps to get said weapon but it doesn't mean that you know mr smith is going to buy an ak-47 and little johnny's going to see it and show his friend and his friend takes it and you know that type of thing you, you, we're not going to be able to stop that parents need to be more involved in their children's lives to, uh, to see the red flags that are coming try to fix if there's a red flag you know get the necessary help that's necessary but if it bypasses all of those rules all of those steps the school has to be protected they are the last four you know that they are yeah. the target they have to be protected yeah i i know i work at a school and the only way anybody's getting in you if you don't have a key you have to be buzzed in so, mm -hmm. yeah, um, I would be very, very uncomfortable if anybody could just walk into the school where I'm at, <clears throat> especially knowing that, you know, my kid is there, too. So that would make me a little uneasy. And, and real quick before we wrap this up, what really hurt me about last week's incident is the fact that the victims were like third and fourth graders, man. Yes. They ain't even started life yet. I had actually just left my granddaughter's fourth grade graduation. And two hours later, that happened. So I was just in a school filled with second, third, and fourth grade kids. And, you know, I seen my grandkids and those kids that were shot and killed. So, yeah, I, I definitely understand. It's not going to be okay for any age group, but for no, the young not. baby. It's yeah. not, but For these the young are babies. still babies, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, it's horrible. Um, and yeah, I'm just yes. hoping that, you know, I know we shouldn't point to any one thing to put the stopgap in there. It's It's got to be, like you said, spread out. Yeah. Um, I also think, too, architecture of the school, of new schools being built needs to have this in mind as well. When you're building a school, Okay, if there is said active shooter, you know, where what is an escape room? Whatever, you know, because those kids, in your, he went into the room, there was no place else for these people to go, and he just shot them like fish in a barrel. Yeah, I mean, I know. there's no way for them to go. A lot of schools do this, and in the school where I work, we do it as well. There's a monthly drill, very similar to the fire drill and the tornado drill. We have yeah. other safety drills. Uh, we have, <laughs> you know, active shooter, um, uh, hazardous chemicals, 
uh, intruder, uh, any kind of lockdown. So we do practice a lot of drills. Um, and I, you know, just the fact of you saying that makes the whole statement even more sad. You know, when you and I were in school, we had tornado drills, fire drills. That's it. Yeah. We didn't, we didn't have to worry about an extra shooter drill. And the fact that our babies have to do that is just, it's sad, disheartening. Very sad. This world needs help. This world needs Jesus. Uh, great segue into my next topic, man, because I spent a lot of time at home last week, you know, just relaxing and chilling when I wasn't working on the honeydew list, but watching a lot of TV. And I'm noticing more and more, especially on commercials, but also on TV shows, there's more and more blatant homosexuality on TV. And, you know, I'm not here to pass judgment on anybody. You do you, whatever that is. I'm, 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 this is not what this is about. What I'm coming at you with, I believe that it's almost thrown in our face and forced now like an agenda. And I wanted to know if you get that same feeling. Yeah, I mean, yes. Yeah, short answer, yes. That's that, And they are pushing that agenda. Do I agree with that lifestyle? No. Am I going to judge somebody who's in that lifestyle? No. <laughs> um, and, and that's the thing right there. You know, we have too many people that go way too far with it. And they try to beat people over the head. You shouldn't do this. You need Jesus. You need this. You need that, that, that. It's okay not to agree with it. And, you know, I will tell a homosexual friend that I don't agree with that lifestyle. But I am not going to make them feel like any less of a person either. Exactly. Because I mean, if, if you're gonna if you're gonna handle it the Christian way, you have to do exactly what Jesus would do. He wouldn't turn his back on anybody. He'd tell you exactly. that what you're doing is wrong, but he wouldn't turn his back on you. He's still gonna love you regardless. You exactly. Um, What's that phrase? Uh, love the person, hate the sin. Yeah, exactly. And you know. If, if you're a firm believer in the Bible and you're going to believe the passages, you can't pick and choose what passages to believe and what not to believe. You have to accept the whole Bible for what it is, in my humble opinion. And yes, the Bible does say that man shall not lay down with man. It clearly says that. But it also says, do not judge unless you want to be judged. <laughs> you know, so you, you can't have one without the other. I agree so, 100%. You know, I, I don't I don't agree with the agenda being pushed. I don't want it thrown in my face. You know, if there is, uh, for instance, um, what's the show with Ru, RuPaul where she does all the all the guys, you know, they're doing the, the, the drag queen stuff. Yeah, um, I'm not familiar a, with the name it's of been, it. It's been a reality show for years, you know. But I know what that show is. I don't want to watch it, so I don't watch it. Am I am I upset that it's on TV? Of course not. You know, that's why I have choices to go elsewhere, you know, but some of somebody might not like Disney or you know the Marvel universe, you know, and so they don't watch the Marvel shows. I mean, I don't know. Well, you're finding a lot of that on Disney now. Oh yeah, I mean, because they're gonna they're they're trying to make it. Well, they're trying to cater to everybody, but yes. I think that and they're they pushing it to. just a little too far. Right, because they don't they want to because everybody's money's green, right? And and it's not so, just about sexuality either. Uh, no. You and I have had the conversation about the latest Star Wars movies. One of the things that a lot of people <coughs> didn't like about it is the fact that they pushed Ray out to the forefront saying, hey, here's a nobody, and she, not they, but she can do anything that any man can do and probably do it better. And not have any training, uh, not have any instruction, but you automatically are the best ever at what you do. Um, no, no, bro. That, that, that's pushing an agenda to me. 
Right. And like I said, everybody's money's green. So everybody wants everybody's money. You know, Marvel, Disney wants everybody's money. They don't want to say, you know, push out one particular party or belief system. We're going to cater our characters to everybody so everybody can relate somehow so they would continue to consume our product. Right. That's what it, it boils down to. Right. And unfortunately, again, if you go back to Christian belief, you know, that's that's the devil working through, uh, you know, uh, the entertainment world, you know, to for us to consume um, earthly pleasures, you know, the mm -hmm. pleasures of the flesh type of thing. So we're in we're in the end times, my friend, if people want to believe it or not, it might be 100 years, but, you know, one of these days that trumpet's going to call and I'm going to hear it and. This is going to be me. Hey, this is us at the podcast. <laughs> and this is going to be me. I'm going to be outing. <laughs> Speaking of the end times, it's almost time for my car to start, stop working. Um, right. I remember back in the day, <clears throat> gas was $1.99 and we were pitching a bitch. It's getting ready to go to $2. It's getting ready to go to, what am I going to do when it goes to $2? Well, if it went down to $2 now, I'd probably do my happy dance every morning because we about to hit $6. Uh, it's predicted by the end of the summer. That's not good. Uh, it's already that in California. Yeah, that's true. Um, what was it? I, I left for Kansas City last Saturday. I filled up my tank here in Stafford. It was $3.99. And along the way, I found four, 405, whatever, all the way up there. Uh, just somewhere off of uh, Holmes or Warnell, I found a gas station. I believe it was the Quick Trip there for 392. I hurried up and filled my tank before I left uh, yes, sir. that weekend. Funny thing about it is when I got back here, <coughs> you know, day or two later, the missus and I went out and we noticed the gas had shot up. It said 415. And she was like, oh, yeah, while you were gone, it went up to 409. So now it's 415. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Well, it and, shot that way up over the weekend because I knew everybody would be trapped. Yeah. Now, I haven't looked at it today. Has it gone down any? No. I don't oh. believe so. Well, that's not good then. I mean, yeah, I'm the gas station I get to. I hover. It's right about four hundred five, four hundred seven, somewhere in that arena. Yeah, and um, um, now what are we gonna do when he gets the six bucks a gallon? We ain't gonna do nothing but put more gas in our car <laughs> because we have to have it. Unfortunately, yeah, we we have to have it. I, I I can tell you what I will do for real. It'll be working home, working home. If it's anywhere else, I gotta be. Um, if it's not walking distance, if I don't put it, get on a bike, I just ain't going to need to go there. Here's the thing. Before mm -hmm. there's going to be a change, diesel price has to come down. Because if the diesel price is still keeping going up, these trucks are going to decide to sit. And that means, you know, the Walmarts, the Targets. It's the funny Piggly that you Wiggly's, mentioned that. They're not going to get their products. Because I was getting ready to say, you know, instead of going to the store or picking up stuff, I'll shop online, but what happens when the UPS man doesn't want to deliver? Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, I'm in the trucking the business, other. so trust me. I, the the diesel prices are hard to live with. Yeah. And it seems like the freight prices are going down, and the fuel prices are going up. And you know, they're they're separating, and so there's, they're at a point now where they're almost at a point where I'm gonna lose money by actually working. And yeah, believe know, me, driver. I <laughs> will be sick if I fill my tank up off of that $6 per gallon gas, go to Walmart to get something, and they're out of stock, and they don't know when it's coming back. Exactly. Well, when it gets to $6 a gallon, I won't be filling up my tank. <laughs> no. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be hard to fill it up. It'll yeah, be I'll be like, okay, I, I'm going to put 30 bucks in, and we're going to see where we go. I mean, it might last 35, 45 minutes, but <laughs> this is where we're going. Yeah, I believe it because I'm thinking – what is it? 30 bucks for half a tank uh, for Ford Escape. So that's at $4 a gallon. 
So you're looking yeah. at about, that's almost $50 for half a tank if we get up to $6 a gallon. Yeah, just like Cat Williams said, you shouldn't be at a gas station making life decisions. You know, you shouldn't be at the fuel pump making life decisions. You That's know, a good way did to I eat? It. Did I eat today? <laughs> Can yeah. I afford to put gas in my tank? Yeah, you shouldn't have to do that. Yeah, if you got to weigh in on whether or not you eat or whether or not you drive, <laughs> there's some serious problems going on in life. All right. Um, let's get to the fun stuff. Right. Everybody who's uh, really paid attention uh, two weeks ago in our last podcast, we talked about the current 2022 Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue, and we said that we were going to come back to y'all and give you our all-time favorite Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. And, show, I'm going to let you go first uh, if you want to. You can give me your... Yeah, uh, I can't. I, I, I had a tie, my all-two favorite. Um, when I well, was you should kid, mention that because I have a tie too. So I'm going to see if <laughs> either one of your two match either one of my two. Uh, when I was younger, Kathy Ireland was the shit. So I really liked her swimsuit issue. And then Tyra Banks. I mean, you can never go wrong with Tyra Banks. I almost, we almost had one in common. I, Tyra Banks was teetering on there. Teetering on there. But I'm going to tell you why I chose the two that I chose. Uh, the, the first one, and I'm reading her name because I don't think I could have pronounced it right. Arena Shake. I believe that's how it's pronounced. I'm not, I'm not sure how long she was in the modeling game, but it was a 2011 swimsuit <laughs> issue. I chose that one, obviously, because of her looks and, and, and the whole pose and everything, because after a while, let's face it, the poses all look the same, but this one stood out to me. But 1A, for completely different reasons, would have been, I think it was last year's swimsuit model. It was Naomi Osaka. And that one completely different. That one I was looking at from an actual artist slash photographer eye. Um, she had on the one piece, but the striping on it um, captured my eye with the ocean in the background. And I'm assuming it was the wind blowing her hair or styled that way. And I liked the artistry of that one. So the beauty of the first one, the artistry of the other one. So that's why I chose those. But yeah, Tyra Banks was in the running for a minute. Yeah, I, I can't, you can't go wrong with Tyra. I think what ruined it for me was I still had that old Penny Hardaway commercial in the back of my head. It's, it's Tyra Banks, fool. And, 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 you know, every time I hear Chris Rock say that, I'm like, okay, let's go to the next one. <laughs> touche, touche. All right. Um, that is our favorites. I want everybody who's watching on YouTube or listening on one of our uh, podcast feeds Leave a comment. Let us know what your favorite swimsuit year was and who was on the cover of that. And let us know why you like that one. Uh, nostalgia, the art, the beauty, whatever. Anything goes. It's personal the preference. Booty. They all look good. <laughs> if, if, if they didn't, they wouldn't have made the cover. So, you know. Exactly. All right. Now. I like their personalities. Oh, yeah. That shows through on film. She has a pretty personality. And they might. I'll never know because I'm busy looking at, you know, other things. Um, real quick, because I know we are uh, got about seven minutes before we wrap it up. I want to ask you about goals. Do you have any professional and personal goals for this summer? I do. Um, professionally, I would like to get four more drivers or four more trucks, you know, company truck, company drivers or four more owner operators to join, uh, my business just to help grow that. But like I said, the, the, the rates and the fuel is making that difficult to, 
yeah. to do. So I'm about to do some enticing, you know, type of stuff to get people on board. Personally, I mean, I'd like to lose some weight. Um, ideally, I would like to be down 100 pounds, but I know I'm not going to get that in the summertime. Um, first of all, I got to get my mindset right. Mm -hmm. um, but I think if I can, if I can lose 25 pounds this summer, I think that'd be well on my way to that's, my overall goal. That's very achievable, very achievable. And I noticed that, you know, on the change format forum on uh, Facebook, you, you've been active. So, you know, keep doing that. Yes, sir. You know, it's the little ones, little things that add up. Um, you never want to try to like hit the home run when it comes to any kind of fitness, because <laughs> what is that saying uh, when it comes to weight loss? Uh, you didn't gain it all in one or two days. So how can you expect to lose it? It was that one donut. It was that one donut. <laughs> I had, man. It was it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so for me on a professional level, um, I'd like to uh, get all my YouTube channels. Um, I'd like to build them up a, a lot more over the summer. That way, when I go into the fall, I have a stronger following on each channel. And, you know, shameless plug, if you want to follow all the channels, you're more than welcome to. But I just want to get them all lined up so that they're all doing well. I mean, I don't need to be a millionaire or anything like that. I just want to see growth. I want to see growth and, and that would make me happy. That way I know it's going in the right direction. I, I like entertaining people, but I like informing people and uplifting people. And to me, that's what it's all about. Anything that I learn, I want to pass on. And also I like to learn about things as well. So that's on the professional level. On the personal level, just like you, I need to get in a lot better shape. Um, I need to actually start running. What's the word I'm looking for? Not sporadically, but. Um, you, you periodically? Know, not, not periodically. Uh, um, consistently. That's the word I'm looking Consist for. There we go. Consistently. We're going to get it. We're going to yeah. get the word eventually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I need to be more consistent. Not just two days this week, three days next week, one day. You know, I need to get consistent. And. I am going to get out there and hit it hard after work tomorrow, get a couple miles in because tomorrow is June 1st. Uh, I believe that's global running day. And I would have uh, started today, but I had a 12 hour shift today and yesterday made me sore. I got back in the weight room, man. Uh, did that five by five workout, did them squats, man, my legs are feeling it. I seen that. I seen you post that. Yeah, so I'm 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 got to get consistent about it. Um, you know, the weight room is Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So I would really like Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday to make sure that I run. And also, I'm gonna throw this out: not physical fitness related. I got a couple guitars hanging on the wall, and I really need to buckle down and practice more. Because I said that by the end of the year, I would like to be able to play a couple of songs, you know, not just strum something or, you know, play a chord. I want to be able to play a couple songs. Well, here we are. We, we are on the last <clears throat> month of the first half of the year. So it's only six more months to go for me to fulfill that promise. So I've got to get it in gear. That's a good one. I'm writing that down so I can hold you accountable. Hey, I appreciate that. That, yes, sir. That, that's something that you know friends do hold you accountable they 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 kick you in the butt so to speak hey i thought you said you were going dot 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 you know so i like right. that i definitely yeah, like that deaf. and you know that means because i am the moderator on the change forum that i'm just gonna be like ryan did you get your steps in today <laughs> i do it do it do it okay all right uh that's all i've got for this week you got anything else before we go out Nope, just as I always say, man, uh, especially with the topics today, you know, love on each other. Tomorrow's not promised. You know, don't leave anything unsaid because you never know when that last time will be the last time. Absolutely. So love each other. 
love each other. All right, we are going to get out of here. Everybody stay positive, stay blessed. We will see you again next week. Big Show, it's been another good one, man. I thank you very much. All right, man, I appreciate it. All right, everybody take care.